Okay. So today we are going to talk about um, hashes and iterating over hashes, uh, which is really important. I'm going to share my screen. There we go. So uh, we're looking at right now a lab in our learn curriculum called the Hash Iteration Lab. And this lab challenges you to build a method in Ruby that iterates over a hash. Uh, but before we even work on this method, let's just take a few minutes to review uh, what exactly a hash is, why we might use a hash, and how we build hashes, uh, in, important things. Um, so a hash is a data structure. It's one of the tools within our programming toolkit um, to allow us to store our data. Other data structures you might be uh, very familiar with would be things like arrays. Uh, you might, you probably have used arrays quite often already. Um, an array is a data structure and a hash is a data structure. So what's the difference between a hash and an array? So let's take a look at the Ruby docs for what a hash is. So here in the Ruby docs, it says, a hash is a dictionary-like collection of unique keys and their values. Also called associative arrays, they are similar to arrays but where an array uses integers as its index, a hash allows you to use any object type. So, and just to reiterate that or to further make that point, this blog post from a long time ago, this feels like ancient history from 10 years ago, um, says what is a hash, he writes here, um, a hash is a collection of objects exactly like an array. The difference with arrays, though, is that the indexes of a hash are not represented with integer values. Instead, the key can be an object of any type. That's pretty cool. So any type of object can be the key. So he's already he italicized the word key here very intentionally because he's uh, drawing us to the fact that what we call the index number or the index place in a hash is not an index, into, it's not an index number because it's not only an integer, it could be anything, but we call it a key. And the key, uh, and hashes are also called sometimes dictionaries uh, because here in his example, where he's creating a hash with of animals, this is the key, dog, and here's the value, Charlie. Here's the key, cat, and here's the value, Queaky. Here's the key, mouse, and here's the value, Squeaky. And here in the Ruby doc, here's an example of, here's the key, Jane Doe, and the value, 10. The key, Jim Doe, and the value six. So um, as you noticed here, there's two uh, ways that you can create the key values that, um, well, there's three ways. Here you can create the keys using uh, quotation marks. You can create them here as symbols, right? With When you put the colon in front of the, the, st the string, you're creating a symbol. And here you can create it like such with uh, just font size 10 font family, Arial, um, et cetera. Um, and so there's three different ways that you can go about creating a hash. All of them work. They all do essentially the same thing. Uh, we love symbols in Ruby. We use symbols a lot. So you could, you know, you could stick to this method of writing your hash just to keep to the uh, syntax of symbol language because we use, end up using symbols a lot, particularly when you start interacting with Rails and you're in the Ruby on Rails, um, in Ruby on Rails universe. Uh, so uh, a hash is a dictionary, and here's the word, dictionary-like collection of unique keys and their values. Um, and so as opposed to, um, as opposed to an array where we might say, um, array equals uh, zero, one, two, three. Uh, so we would identify the place of our uh, zero by index number zero. Even to make that clearer, let's just say um, an array is this something else, just three strings. So the index of this would be zero, right? So we would call array one zero would give us this, right? And array one one would give us something. So that's how we would structure and identify and retrieve information with an array as opposed to this, where we might do something like this, um, school flat iron uh, language, 
Ruby, right? Just as a short example. So the way we would identify, um, the way we would get the information out of that hash would not be like this because our hash is stored not with integer index numbers, um, unless we use integers, but it's not stored with integer index numbers. It's stored by keys like a dictionary. So we would actually do something like this and we get back flat iron, right? Or we could do language and get back language, which would be Ruby. Uh, does that make sense so far? If it does, then I'll move on. If not, right now might it be a good... So the key, you, you call it with the key instead of the array number. So right. like if you had a key that was like Beyonce, you would call it with that. Right. So if I would ask you what would be the benefit of using a hash over an array, what might be, just based on what we know so far, what might be um, a benefit? It would be like because it's more in depth, like like more data to sort. Well, maybe I think you're on a right track. But if I were to ask you, if you didn't know anything about this array, you didn't know anything about it at all, and you, I would just say, what is array one at index number zero? What would you tell me? Um, Not knowing anything about what's inside the array, what would you tell me? It's the, f the first thing in the list. It's the first thing in the list. What's in the list? Charla, what's uh, in the list? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you, so if I'm hearing you correctly, what you're saying is the number zero isn't quite descriptive. Right. I, yeah, I don't know what zero is. It could be anything. <laughs> I'd ask you what's in this hash. School. Based, a school. So what might that be? You probably have a hash with dealing with schools. Yeah. So what's the difference, just based on what we know, what we've seen so far, what is one key difference between key, not to be, make a pun, what's one key difference between an array and a hash? It's more descriptive. It's more descriptive. You have the freedom to make more descriptive um, keys. You can use language. And that gives you as a developer the ability to create things which are more like a dictionary, right? Quote, unquote. It's a dictionary-like index. Um, so your hash could be um, student. Uh, and then suddenly you're like, oh, I get it. This is a hash with student information, right? Just by looking at that one key, it gives you a world of insight into what's contained in the hash. So it, it lets you craft um, data structures that are, more, um, that are more descriptive in their naming conventions than an array. That could just be one easy, simple thing of why you might want to use a hash over an array, what well, one benefit of a hash over an array is. In fact, in this blog post, he says that exactly here. Um, why should I use hashes, right? It's a good way to know what the subject matter of his paragraph here is. One of the obvious advantages with hashes is their readability. When you write animals for, it's quite hard to see which animal you're trying to get. When you write animals, the symbol dog, it becomes pretty obvious. A maybe less obvious but extremely useful thing about hash is that you can improve the way you pass parameters to your methods by making them more flexible. So what does that mean? So let's take a look at this example here and then we're gonna break this down and then we're gonna to get to the, the Learn Lab. So here he's creating um, a hash, right? Called Dance Like an Idiot. And he has a few keys and values in here. He has a key called frequency with a value every minute, an idiocy level with really idiot, and a risk level with losing credibility forever, right? And then now he's created a method here called def dance like an idiot with an argument of params. Do you see that in that line there? I don't want to put my, my mouse over because it blocks it, but an argument over of params. And then he has on lines two, three, and four in this method uh, put statements. Puts params frequency, puts params idiocy level, puts params risk. And then he puts in like fill in here with instructions to start the idiotic dance, right? And he ends the method. What is he doing on lines two, three, and four? Printing to the screen. What's he printing? What um, the, the hash, the value in key, I guess. The, the value in the key. So that's really cool. So let's actually create an example of that. Um, okay, let's create a, uh, um, a new hash. Or let's actually just use our my hash, right? Why, why change it? So def um, bootcamp params. 
puts um, params school puts params lane. What's going to happen when I call boot camp and what should I pass inside boot camp? I guess params. In order to make it helpful. So if I pass in params, what happens? Nothing. Undef a name error. Undefined local variable or method params for the object. Because we have not defined anything called params. Params doesn't, it's not a variable. We haven't created it. So what do I need to pass in? One of the keys? What, what hash should we just create that has a key of school and a key of lane? What's it called on line? My five? hash. My hash. Flat iron ruby, right? So cool. what are params? What is that? If par if params is something that we cannot um, pass in as a default uh, as an argument within the within the method because it gives us a name error, then what what are params? What is that? I have what no clue. Is? Anybody is else know? <laughs> Deconstructing what just happened here, what do you think it is? Params is, <laughs> params is a sh built in shorthand to reference the values of keys. And you. Does it stand for parameters or? Precisely. It stands for parameters. And you will end up using params quite a lot as you build out your Rails applications. Why are you going to use params? Because let's say you build out a form. Um, let's see if we can find a form. Um, where can we find a form? Give me a good website to find a form at. Any kind of form. I don't even know. I can't think of the top of my head. Um, Google, Google form. <laughs> let's go to Google. There's a form, right? After it eventually ends up loading. Um, this right here, this search box, right? And when you press enter, that's a form, right? So when I type in um, Flatiron School is awesome, right? I type Flatiron School is awesome and press enter. What happens behind the scenes? Do we know? It uses those words to search. Right. So on the back end, I have passed in this query to the Google and the Google magic, whatever's happening in the back end, takes that query and searches the entire known universe and brings back to me um, my results uh, algorithmized. Uh, I don't know if that's a word, but it puts through the Google algorithm to give me um, my results, right? So Flatiron School is awesome is my params. So when this uh, is being passed to the Google backend, it's going something like this. Something like this. I don't, I don't actually know what it looks like on their back end, but something like uh, it's going something like that. That's what it kind of look like. Or it could be just, uh, or it could without even the params might not be made explicit there. And it could be just, That's what's getting passed back to their back end when I were, and that's any time you use a form. So if I were to use a form and like fill out my username, my form would be um, Ben. And then my password would be, um, you know, password. And that gets passed back to the back end of whatever web application I'm using. And then some authentication schemas happens to authenticate me, right? But that on line 14, that's, those are params. And so theoretically, I as the web application developer could check your authentication by calling params username. And that would return to me, Ben. Does that make sense? If it makes sense, I will assume the silence means yes. Yes. 
<laughs> okay, so that's params, and they come in. They are very handy when you're dealing with web applications or mobile applications. Um, and so params is built in within um, within our language to understand what params. When you say puts params, what you're saying is put in the values, return the values, print out the values of these keys. So now, having said that, let's look at our um, hash iteration lab, right? Build a method that accepts an argument of a hash and iterates over it. So build a method key for min value, min being same from minimum, that accepts an argument of a hash. This method should iterate over the hash and return the key, not the value, that points to the smallest value of the set. If the method is called and passed an argument of an empty hash, it should return nil. So here's some examples, right? So if we had a hash of Ikea, uh, with a value, a keys of chair, table, and mattress equaling a uh, value, with keys, right, equaling values of 25, 85, and 450. If I were to use my method, which we've magically created, passing in Ikea, it would return to us chair, right? That's what we need to do, because chair has a value of 25, and so the minimum value is 25, which is the lowest number here, and we're looking to return the key, so we get back the word chair, right? Or if we have veggies, apples is negative 45, banana is negative 44.5, and care is negative 44.9, if I would do the exact same method, I would get back apple. Make sense? Yes, awesome. So we're not meant to use these really helpful built-in methods in Ruby. We're not even gonna talk about these methods tonight. These methods will save your life down the road. We are gonna build this out um, uh, long in the long way without using some of the built-in higher level methods that Ruby has in um, that allows you to do this um, automatically. So we're not going to worry about those. We're going to build this out like that. Cool? Cool. I love that you just said automatically. <laughs> that I was awesome. I actually learned that at Flatiron. That was, I'm going to borrow that from you, Ben. Okay. We're borrowing it from the wonderful um, educators at Flatiron. That's where it came from. I think it might have come from Avi. Actually, Avi might have been the one I first heard Automagic from. Um, okay, so let's build this out, right? Let's actually do it in IRB, just for fun. Let's just start a new IRB session. Let's make, uh, let's make our example hash we're going to iterate over. So let's call the hash um, uh, the weather. And let's say we want the weather to be Monday uh, 55. Tuesday, 45. Wednesday, let's be really hopeful and say 65. Doesn't that sound great? Okay, so now we've, we're gonna create a hash called weather. That's gonna have three keys, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And those three keys are gonna have values of 55, 45, and 65. So if we would create this method called key for min value, what key would we get back? What would be the key with the lowest value? Tuesday? Tuesday, right. So let's build this method. So we know we need to call a key for min value, right? And what are we passing into it? Param? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm guessing. Well, we're, pass, well, we're creating a method, right? And we, when we create methods, we want the method to be as flexible as possible. So we want to give it um, just a placeholder name for what we're going to do. A of the week or something? That's in a hash, right? Oh, hash. So this method should take in any hash, not just weather hashes or veg vegetable hashes or, or hashes of flat iron students. It should just take in any hash, right? That's all it should take in. And that word hash is just a placeholder, letting us know this method is going to take in one argument. That's all it's doing. So how might we do this? So we need to, um, what do we need to do first? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, assign, we need to create two variables. What are the things that we want these variables to hold? We're looking for the lowest key and the lowest value, right? Right? Right. So we probably want to create a variable called lowest key, right? And what do we want it to equal to? Let's look at our um, instructions again. Build a method key for minimum value that accepts an argument of hash. This method should iterate over the hash and return the key, right? Points to the smallest value. 
if the method is called and pass an argument of an empty hash, it should return nil, right? So what do we want to set the default argument for, for this variable? Nil? Nil, right? Because the default argument is nil. So if we pass in an empty hash, it has no values. Then when we return these variables, they're already going to be set to nil, which means the default argument will be, the default return value will be nil. Awesome. Okay. So lowest key. And we also want to hold, create a variable that's going to hold our lowest value. And let's also set that to nil. So we've done that. Now we want to iterate over our hash. Um, what's a good iterator method? Something well, what do, really map, what are we trying to do? We are like, trying to look at each key value pair and return the one that has the, the, we want to return the key that has the lowest value. So we don't want to transform our array, our hash. We don't want to create a new hash. We just want to look and iterate through it. I heard you say the word each. <laughs> Did I say the word each? Somewhere in there. <laughs> Did I already predetermine the iterator method we should use? Oh, no. Bad. Maybe, but it's OK. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do that. So hash dot each. And what's the syntax for when we do one of these? What do we put next? Oh, I see a question box. Let's take a look. Yes, exactly. Thomas and Sarah, perfect. Oh, Thomas, you said each. Amazing. Sarah said do. Right. Okay, great. So hash dot each do. And this is where we hold the iterated item, right? This is the variables we assign to the item we're iterating over in the moment. What name should we give it? Let's give it really simple names. Something that's going to be easy to remember. P and value. That's pretty easy, right? Because our hash consists of two items at any single moment we're iterating over. And every object we're iterating over on our hash, a hash consists, each hash object consists of two items, a key and a value. So each time we iterate over each item, we're iterating over two things, a key and a value. Um, and so now we, we're, we're inside our each method. What do we want to look for? So first of all, if lowest value equals nil or what what are we interested about what does the value need to be so the value needs to be less than or more than something let's take a look at the chat box value is less than lowest value that's precisely right awesome you you're like an iterating expert Thomas. So if, uh, let's go back into here. Um, so if lowest value equals nil, or value is less than lowest value, and what are we doing here? Why is this important? What is this if statement important for? Just making sure we're all on the same page. Why are we doing this if statement? So we can iterate. <laughs> we're iterating already on line five. But so why we can we have it do something. We want it to do something, right? Return something or tell us something? Returns a Boolean, true or false, right. So if, that's right. So if lowest value equals nil, that's true, right? And so if, if true is, uh, if that's true, then we're going to do something, right? And if the value is, or if the value is less than the lowest value, then now we turn true, we want to do something, right? So we want to create a conditional, a moment of conditional, uh, a conditional moment, I guess, with the proper grammar there, a conditional moment where um, we're checking if something is true. And if it's true, we want to act on it, right? Okay, just making sure. So if the lowest value equals nil, or the value is less than the lowest value, then what do we want to say? Lowest value equals value. Yep. Lowest value equals value and lowest key equals, now it should be obvious. We like key. <laughs> key. Equals key. 
So that's our if statement. So if the lowest value is nil or the value in our hash is less than the lowest value, then we're gonna make the lowest value variable equal to the value. And if, and the lowest key equal to the key, right? So we're gonna end, we're gonna end our if statement and we also need to end our iterator. And what do we crucially need to do here? Crucially need to do, otherwise if we don't do this, then this has all been for naught. You have to return it. We have to return it. What do we have to return? Key for min value. Yes, we're not interested in the value, right? We're interested in the key. So we just have to return the lowest key. And then we can end. Awesome. Should we see if it works? Of course. <laughs> of course. Key for min value. That's the name of our method. Let's pass in weather. Let's cross our fingers and see if it works. Did it work? It worked because Tuesday is equal to 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Brrr. And so therefore the lowest value in that hash is, is uh, 45, which has a key of Tuesday and it returned to us Tuesday. So that actually worked. Um, that's awesome guys, we actually did it. Um, we built this method. Are there any questions on this? Can't you return? Can't you just run the? I think it would be cooler. Well, yeah, you're just not printing out the lowest value, I guess. So because our, our instructions were only called by the yeah. key, right? Otherwise, we could do both. Um, there's one last thing we can talk about if there's no more um questions on this. Um, have any of you done string interpolation before? Interpolation. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Sometimes you I'm are. Okay, good. Thanks, guys. So, <laughs> interpolation. Has anyone ever done that? Yes. Right. So, what is it? Is in essence, a lot of yes guys are like. Cash what is it? What do you want to interpolate? Something from the previous method. Well, what is it? just as a. Uh, uh, the top level of what that what that actually is. What does it mean when you're interpolating in the string? You're, you're accessing um, an argument or uh, a value or a variable. Yeah. So how might we do that in Ruby? Pound in between mustache brackets, surrounded by quotes. So do we need quote like double quotes here? Yes. Well, let's say. Uh, Tuesdays, the, let's just write long form. The forecast for Tuesday is, and how might we put in the, the uh, variable? Pound, mustache, open mustache, sorry. Um, weather, square bracket, colon, Tuesday. And uh, close it. Yeah. Awesome. So that's really um, cool and really helpful that string interpolation is actually a really powerful um, tool that you have in your programming tool bit, toolkit also because it lets you that create dynamic sentences or dynamic content um, for your applications. Uh, you can imagine the multitude of scenarios that you would use this. So instead of hard coding every uh, sentence or paragraph for your users, you can actually create some dynamic content by putting variables throughout it. And the variables can, let's say, you can even depend on user input. Um, and so you end up creating a more interactive experience um, using string interpolation. And in fact, every programming language has its own way for um, interpolating um, in a string, uh, creating a template literal essentially, which is combination of string with variables. Um, and uh, it, it, they all look incredibly similar to minor differences um, in, in the way in which you construct it, but essentially they're all very similar. Are there any, uh, I, I wanna make sure we capture any other questions um, because we covered a lot actually. How do you pull out uh, like the value, like 45 instead of 
like you know how we we pulled out the key yeah how would how would you do the lowest value how do you think we might do that how does does anyone have an idea i'm assuming you would change the lowest key line to well, the lowest value in our method we could easily do that in our method right because we've we're hold, we created variables to hold the lowest key and lowest value. So on line, ele on line 11, we could just return back lowest value as opposed to lowest key. But how might we in our um, weather method here, so it, actually in our weather method, what do we return back? The lowest value. In our weather so, method, our weather string. We, we return back the lowest value. Yeah, two things value. And what do we return back in our lowest key method? I gave it away. Our, lowest key. <laughs> So we return the key here and we return the value here. So every time you would access a variable with the uh, brackets and then the symbol of the key, you will return back the value in, 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 inside that key, the value of that key value pair. Um, and then to return the key, how much do you think we might return the key? Does anyone know? How would we return the key? So like, what if we wanted to make this string um, return the key and not the value? Anyone, any idea? I was trying to figure that out myself a minute ago. It's a good question, right? Because we, more often than not, in most of our usage cases, we're going to want to return the value and not the key because the key is the point to access the value. The information we really want is the value, not the key. So most often, we're not going to worry about returning the um, key. But how might we do that? So you know a great place to look? I, instead of just telling you, why don't we Google it, right? Because Googling is awesome. Uh, so what might we Google? Let's Google uh, return key um, in hash Ruby. Look, stack overflow, return a single key from a hash? It's a good question. That might even be our question. I like to know how to return a specific key from a hash. Example, here's a hash, kick 100, punch 50. How would I return the first key kick from this hash? So how might we do that? Moves.keys0. So remember here in the lab, it said we're not going to use these things, right? This method called keys. Look at what it does. And how do you access it? It's almost like you're accessing it like an array, right? So if we would do weather.keys0, we get back Monday. Weather's our key one, we get back Tuesday. Weather's our key uh, three, we get back nil. Why we get back nil? Because there is no value there. There's nothing there. Weather's our key two, we get back Wednesday. Um, pretty cool, right? Yeah, that is cool. Or even moves.keys.first will obviously give us back the first key, the same way that zero. So the way to access keys in Ruby, the easiest and most simple way, which by again is not a common usage case because the key is usually just it serves in the same place that the index number in an array serves you often don't care about the index number you care about what's the data that's held there so similarly you don't really care about the key you care about the data that's held there the key is just a point to access it but dot keys in ruby is a great higher level way um, to access the keys